It's another edition of Time About the Movies, and today we're taking a look at the films of August 13th, 1999. Only three films to look at, so let's just go ahead and jump right on into it. We'll start off with the biggest new release of the weekend, Steve Martin and Eddie Murphy in Frank Oz's Bowfinger. So Steve Martin plays a down-and-out filmmaker in Hollywood attempting to make a film on a small budget with a star who does not know that he is in the movie. And Eddie Murphy plays actually two roles in this, but not like the Nutty Professor. He plays himself as Kit Ramsey, and then he plays his his brother, I think it is, Jim uh, Jim Jifferens. Jiff, this is a really weird name, Jifferenson Jiff Ramsey. That's um. That's what I think the name is. That's the name is, and I think that's what his character is in the movie. I need to do some more research here. He's a lookalike. I th- it's been a while since I've seen this movie, but um, I thought I thought for a second there that it was his brother, but no, it's just a lookalike, and he literally goes by the name of Jiff. Jiff. I'm never gonna be able to pronounce his name. Jiff Renson. Jiff Ramsey. I'm just gonna call him Jiff Ramsey. That's just that just makes sense here, but um. I'm getting this confused and all that, but um, needless to say, this is a really, really damn good movie. I mean, this is one of Eddie Murphy's most underrated films that he's ever made as a fi- as an actor. I mean, this is a film that really gives him a chance to go all out and do something very different compared to what he we're used to seeing from Eddie Murphy at this point. It was a really good film, and Steve Martin also co-wrote the, wrote the script for this. Once again, Frank Oz directed it. Um, uh, the last time these two teams two worked off each other was House Sitter, which was not the best film overall. But Frank Oz is a really good director, a, co- a comedy, great comedy director. Did What About Bob, and this is just a really fun, slick, satirical comedy about modern filmmaking. Uh, Heather Graham also has a role in here, is a role that's basically inspired by Anne Hesch, who was actually dating Steve Martin at the time, which is funny to think about nowadays. But um, uh, you have her in here. She's really good. Christine Baranski, Terrence Stamp, Robert Downey Jr. playing Jerry. The Universal Executive is pretty funny. Jamie Kennedy is also in here. John Cho, Phil Lewis, uh, Marisol Nichols. Just a really fun cast in here and a really fun concept overall. And really, it's all about Eddie Murphy. I mean, Steve Martin is great in the film too, but Eddie Murphy really does something very unique and very different compared to what we've seen from him. I mean, you would look at this and think like, oh, this is just Nutty Professor all over again, playing multiple roles here. But no, he actually is doing something very unique and very different and actually makes it very funny the way it plays out in this film. This is a really funny and really smart satirical comedy that I'm glad I've seen, I'm seeing is getting more attention in the years since it's released, but it's definitely worth it. If you haven't seen Bowfinger, I highly recommend checking it out. It's one of the best movies Steve Martin has done. One of Eddie Murphy's most underrated films overall. Just a phenomenal film. I can't recommend it enough. Bowfinger, definitely check that one out. So with that said, on to the next movie, and that is Claire Danes in Broke Down Palace. Before I began, um, I did it again. Last time I said that this movie had, um, when a pouch went in, I could have sworn she was in this, but, um, she's not in this film. It's Claire Danes and Kate Beckinsale. So once again, I apologize for that. Um, I need to do my, like I said before, I need to do my research before I start viewing this because, Doing this off the cuff is not as easy as you think, but um, but anyway, to the movie. Uh, Claire Danes and Kate Beckinsale star as best friends who decide to take a trip to Thailand to celebrate high school graduation. Your first mistake right there. <laughs> These two should not be anywhere near Thailand as hi- is after high school. Oh, like this is this is a disaster waiting to happen. And sure enough, they are befriended by a charming Australian rogue, Nick Parks. Nick convinces them to take a weekend side trip to Hong Kong, but at the airport, they are busted for smuggling drugs, and they're convicted in a show trial and sentenced to 33 years. In desperation, they contract Yankee Hank. This is supposed to be taken seriously, by the way. Yankee Hank, uh, an American lawyer based in Thailand who has has been reported to be helpful if you've got the cash. This is another movie kind of like Force Majeure. It's taking like kind of a similar setup to Force Majeure. We had a movie like this last year, Return to Paradise, and we've had movies that are similar to this where the point of it seems to be like just make this country look absolutely horrible. I mean, we had that a couple years ago with Richard Gere in Red Corner, which was a terrible film. This is also pretty bad. I mean, this is a really, this is a really tone deaf movie. A film that like I think it's trying to have some kind of a message to it. It's trying to have some kind of a purpose to it, but really. It just makes it seem like the place is don't go to these places or else you're going to be immediately considered accused of something that you didn't do. And there's no way you're going to be able to get out of it. I mean, there's nothing about this movie that has anything to work for, towards work towards it that makes it good. Like, there's nothing credible about it. Makes no sense whatsoever. 
you know how it's going to end, and just nothing about this movie makes no sense whatsoever. I mean, and it also doesn't help that Claire Danes actually caused controversy when she made some derogatory comments about Manila, where they shot this during filming. She basically said that the city was ghastly and weird, and uh, that probably did not help this movie in the long run, but um, this movie would need a lot needed a lot of help in the wrong, long run anyway. It's a shame because Jonathan Kaplan directed this film. This was the last film he directed, and we just talked about one of his earlier, one of his more known films, *The Accused*. It's amazing how in eleven years he's gone from *The Accused* to this. This film that just feels like a mess on so many levels. A film that doesn't feel like it has the right idea of what it wants to do, and just feels like a film we've seen done over and over again over the last couple of years. It's just a film that it feels real tasteless. It feels real tasteless, and at times really offensive. And it just doesn't feel like it had an idea of what they wanted to do with it. It just feels like, let's just try to, get, let's just put this out there and put these young stars in here and they'll be able to carry the film on their own. And not so much. This thing bombed pretty quickly. It was largely forgotten. And not surprisingly, I think you can pretty much see why. So that's Broke Down Palace. But, um, so, uh, with that said, let's go ahead and wrap this week up with, with another, with a good film this time around, Detroit Rock City. So kind of like with Dazed and Confused, this is a coming-of-age story told through a filter of 1970s music and culture in the United States about these four teenage boys in a Kiss tribute band who are trying to see their idols in a concert in Detroit in 1978. It's directed by Adam Rifkin and, of course, produced by Gene Simmons. And, of course, the band of the band Kiss is going to show up in the film. Um, this is a pretty damn good movie, man. It's a film that's really funny, really clever, and just has really great talent all around here. Uh, Edward Furlong from Terminator 2 really is good in here. Sam Huntington, one of his early film roles, he's really good here. Lynn Shea, Melanie Linsky, Natasha Leone, Manuel Shariki, Shannon Tweed, Joe Flaherty, uh, Ron Jeremy has a cameo in here, Robert Smith. I mean, there's a lot of talent in this film, and it is a very fun, very silly, over-the-top comedy, and it works towards the film's favor. Unfortunately, the film did not do well. It only made back 17... It, only, it was a $17 million budgeted film, and it brought, barely brought in $6 million total. So it, unfortunately, was a bomb, but it did go on to have a cult following, not just with Kiss and Rock fans, but movie fans in general. It's a film that's really, really funny and knows how silly and stupid it is, and... It's a fun, it's a fun time, man. Like even if you're not the biggest Kiss fan, you can just find so much to admire about this movie. The the intent, the passion, and the the things that they went into making this film. It works very well here. It's a shame that Adam Rifkin hasn't directed a whole lot of other notable films because he's not a bad film maker. He also wrote a Mouse Hunt. He also wrote Small Soldiers. I mean, he's written some decent stuff before. And I don't see any other film on here that he's directed that I can remember that's as memorable as Detroit Rock City. This is probably the, the best thing he's ever done as a director. And, yeah, it's a shame because this guy has made some decent stuff over the years. And he's never really had a big a big film film to follow this up with. Just these little films that nobody really knows about. Like, does anyone out here really know about Homo Erectus or Giuseppe Makes a Movie, Chillerama, uh, Shooting the Warwicks, The Last Movie Star? As far as I know, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe there is, but man, that's not seeing it. But I kind of wish we could get to see more of what he could do as a director with a bigger budgeted film like this. But um, it's a fun, it's a fun movie. I really recommend checking it out. If you haven't seen it already, it's definitely worth a watch. Even if you're not the biggest Kiss fan, even if you don't like rock and roll, you can find so much to really admire about the stupidity and the levels of hilarity that this film has. Uh, Detroit Rock City. It's a ton of fun. Definitely check it out. And so on that note, we wrap up another edition of Time About the Movies. When we meet next time, we'll have three more movies, including Hugh Grant and James Caan in the mafia comedy Mickey Blue Eyes, the sequel that everybody was asking for, John claude Van Damme returning for Universal Soldier The Return. Um, I don't think anybody was really looking for this, but it's here, and we're going to talk about it. And uh, Katie Holmes in Teaching Mrs. Tingle. So three films we're going to look at next time, and we'll do that on the next episode. But until then... Thank you very much for watching, and if you want to see more videos like this, please hit the playlist on the next page, check out the previous episode, and I'll see you guys tomorrow for another episode. So thank you for watching, I'll see you next time, and until then, as always, take care.